Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to work on a pond reel because I found a, uh, a four foot eight Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare ugly stick, and uh, I need a I need a little reel for this one. It's only four eight. It's a perfect uh, pole for ponds for crappie and blue, bluegill and the like. And uh, I paid six dollars for the pole, and then I said, well, I need a reel. Walked around the flea market and found a. Uh, an ultralight reel from South Bend, and I haven't done a South Bend uh, reel. And uh, you know they get uh, they get get the reputation of being inexpensive. You can't service them. Parts aren't available, and a host of other reasons. But most of the time, the South Bend reels are sold as combinations. They wind up in stores like Walmart and uh, mass uh, retailers, mass market retailers. And every now and then, you'll find them in a uh, uh, a sporting goods store or the like, but for the most part they're sold in combinations. This uh, little guy was all by itself. It handles two, four, and six pound test. It's perfect in terms of size for a four foot eight pole. Well, I don't just work on all the high end stuff. I try to give all reels a second chance. This one was sitting at the flea market, and well, I don't know anything about the reel. It does catch a little bit on the bottom, and it seems like you have to power through it, so I don't know we have a bent axle shaft, or I don't know if maybe it's just a spool shim. The line on the spool seems to have spooled evenly, so maybe that's not the issue, but uh, we'll be able to identify that one quick enough. Well, today I'm going to take this reel apart. We'll see how it's made. And more importantly, we're just going to keep it serviced so that, well, when it's time to take it fishing uh, with my grandkids or maybe myself, whatever, whoever wants to use that four foot eight pole, and we can have some confidence in it that uh, it's not going to break. It's not your uh, $100 reel. It's probably a $20 reel or so. But it has its purposes and it can certainly go fishing. There's no reason to avoid it uh, just because of what you heard reputation wise. Well, we're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. I'm going to start by removing the handle. When I do, I like to put the handle screw right back into the handle. That way I don't lose that. And I like to put my pieces into a parts tray. That way I know where they are when it comes time to reassemble the reel. Well, taking that off, next thing we're going to do is take this spool off. Now I notice that there's a little bottoming out going on here. Sometimes that's because a axle shaft gets bent. kind of doubt it with this reel because, well, there's just not that much to fight. But take a spin of the reel and see if it's spinning okay uh, without that, and it is. Check underneath here. We have that little ratchet. And I'm thinking we probably need a little washer on top of that, that ratchet. Happen to have one. And uh, that little washer on top of the ratchet will stop this from bottoming out. So uh, we'll go put that back on later and we shouldn't have that issue. Well, this is a single ball bearing reel. There shouldn't be a lot going on in here, but these are what I call confidence boosters. If you haven't worked on a reel before, Oh, uh, what is three dollars, right? It costs actually. I bought two for five. I got a two for five deal on that one. Interestingly enough, this is the other reel that came in a two for five. This is a Johnson Scorpion. It's an underspin, closed-faced reel, and I just can't wait to try this one out. This one could fit on that pole as well. Instead of using the push button for release on a traditional overhand closed-faced reel. This is called an underspin because it runs under the pole. And well, to get it going, you just simply pull back on the lever to release the line while you're casting. And then you turn the handle to engage just like any other uh, closed face reel. Looks like my camera's a little bit out of adjustment, so if you'll just bear with me for a moment. We'll try and get this better frame. Okay, we're going to take our rotor off next. This is a uh, clockwise or reverse threaded nut. So if you can't remove the rotor nut by turning it counterclockwise, the old lefty loosey, then try turning it to the right side and that's what this is. With the nut off, this comes off. This is a traditional uh, anti-reverse. This is not a uh, infinite anti-reverse or an anti-reverse clutch. This one operates with the dog and uh, it has a little spring and a um, little collar here that will make that go in and out. 
when it goes out, it grabs the ridges in the spool here. I don't know if you can see that up close, but there's ridges in the spool. And that's what stops your reel. Well, of course, I tested this. Even at $3, I was going to test it because there's no sense holding this for pieces and parts. And most of the time with these reels, if they break, well, they, they don't get a second chance. They just wind up uh, in the junk drawer or in the trash can because no parts or support are available for them. But uh, in this case, this one went through the test. Everything worked. The bales worked on it. The, as, I, as I mentioned, there's a little bottoming out going on. But uh, that's nothing that can't be resolved. And uh, otherwise, just the light cleaning of this reel. And uh, this reel's got the white finish. There's a couple of reel manufacturers out there that insist on making their, their reels white. And then they get dirty with uh, grime and grease and pond uh, dirt and the like. And uh, not, a, not a fan of white reels, but you know what? Doesn't mean it can't go fishing, right? All right, there's a couple of things we want to do here. I'm going to take the case off next. And I think while, it, while, I'm at, while I'm at it, so I don't lose this, I'm going to remove the cam that controls that anti-reverse. Just simply lift that up. And then we'll take this off. We'll disconnect the axle shaft and we'll remove the bearing. And we're doing this as a full service, just as you would do on a $200 reel rather than a $20 reel. And when you take your screws out, I like to leave them on my table to make sure that those screws are all the same size. Now, what makes a $20 reel different from a $200 reel? One of the things, as we talked about already, is the anti-reverse setup is not the... Um, the anti-reverse clutch, which adds cost to a reel. Another thing is the screws. I believe those screws are steel. I guess we got one way we can test it. I have a magnetic screwdriver. And yep, if the magnetic screwdriver is going to pick up the screw, that's a steel screw, not a stainless steel screw. Stainless is not magnetic. All right, we've taken the two, three screws out of the side. So we will remove the case if we can. And we should find plastic bushings now. Yeah, we have plastic bushings in the side case. And uh, again, that accounts for uh, reducing expense. It's a whole lot cheaper to, to use a plastic bushing than it is to use a, uh, a bearing or even a uh, brass or other metal bearing. Well, you can see what's typical of a South Bend reel. This has never been serviced. We were taking some of the older greases off. Now we'll go remove the axle shaft. And this is a typical setup for an older style reel. So it's, uh, if you will, it's old technology. And that's another reason why reels can be uh, sold cheap or inexpensive. Also, the, the gears are what I call pot metal gears. I've heard all kinds of things uh, describe the, the metal in these gears. But uh, I guess I grew up with somebody calling it pot metal, and so it is. This is your crosswind block, your crosswind gear, and the screw that holds the axle shaft on the cross, uh, through the crosswind block uh, so that it is firm. Check your gear. Make sure all of the gear teeth are uniform, that they're not chipped or cracked. If they are, again, it's unfortunate, but you're going to have to toss it. You're not going to find any replacement for it. Do the same thing on the main gear, and the only issue with this one is that all the grease had collected inside the, uh, the ring. That's from centrifugal force throwing off the grease, and uh, well, we can reapply there. And there's only uh, one more thing to take off, and that is the pinion gear, which is held in place by the collar. Well, you're noticing I wear a protective glove on my hand. I do that to keep the greases and other substances of fishing reels off to the extent that I can. I don't wear one on my uh, my working hand. I'm right-handed, as most of you have figured out. And I uh, just don't have the uh, sensitivity or the ability to control them. Well, here's what we were saying about 
steel screws, that head is rusted. Right, and that's because water gets in there and rusts the steel. We should be able to pull the pinion gear and bearing assembly out without having to remove the anti-reverse dog. Let's give it a try. And those are famous last words, right? Uh, we need to remove the anti-reverse dog, so let's go ahead and do that. It's held in place by a screw here. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures, particularly on a reel like this. You're not going to find the schematic for this reel. At least I assume you're not going to be able to find it. I haven't looked. But because there's no service and support, because these are, I call them contractor reels, the company will go out and find a manufacturer and order 100,000 reels or something to be manufactured. They support these with warranty. And uh, the warranty service is generally a uh, service that says repair or replace at uh, your discretion at their discretion, not your discretion. And um, when the warranty comes up, it's almost always a replacement because they don't have a repair staff on hand. If um, parts are needed, they generally take a number of the, uh, the reels that they contract for and they set them aside as donor reels to use for parts to be replaced. Or would that be an example of that? It would be something like a handle that may have broken off and those of you that know the, the mass market retailers, a lot of times handles just mysteriously disappear or they are broken because the customers have kind of beat up the reels while shopping or just been bad actors and removed the handles and some other things. All right, like every one of these, what we want to do now, we oiled the bearing. We're putting a good amount of grease onto the pinion going to reseat this back in. I want to make sure that the bearing sits flush with the case. If it's riding high, you haven't seated it properly. Let's take our tie down then and go put that back on. And this is where your pictures help. Maybe, maybe what you did was you took your pieces and parts off and then the phone rang or you know, somehow you got distracted and well next thing you know gee did I take that collar off first or second or is that seated properly which screws go into it where was that uh, little eccentric spring that's going to hold your anti-reverse how did that anti-reverse dog go in all those questions can be answered with that picture all right, we're going to put that anti-reverse dog on now. And this design of the reel has been around for 50 years. It's a straight up um, pinion gear is turned by your main gear. That makes the rotor go around. And on the back side of it, the, the back end of the main gear, well, that's turning the oscillation gear. And the oscillation gear makes the spool go up and down. Right, so that's how that collar came on. It hooks over that pin on the anti-reverse dog. And if you turn it, you'll see it moving in and out again, just like that. And you can see what I meant by that white case. All of a sudden, all that grease is just accumulating on there. And while to me, it's not very attractive. All right, grease the back of your oscillation gear, grease the teeth of your oscillation gear, the face of your oscillation gear and then install your oscillation gear in the case make sure that the stud on the oscillation gear is down a little bit of grease onto the side tracks where the crosswind block is going to ride and then put a little bit of grease into the crosswind block now all of these are clean so you don't have to worry about that but if you uh, if you're working on a reel that's got a lot of dirt make sure that that channel on the back side of that oscillation uh, gear is clean. All right, well, the shim washer for the main gear just fell off. Take a note. Get a lot of grease into those teeth since, well, it hasn't had grease in it in a while. I'm using pen precision reel grease. I recommend that you only use fishing reel grease when you uh, work on fishing reels. 
now we can take that washer that goes on the handle side. We can insert our main gear in. This is closed up now. Let's go ahead and put the rotor back on. Remember this is a reverse threaded nut. So you're going to turn this counterclockwise to tighten up on this wheel. Spinning counterclockwise. For those of you that don't know counterclockwise because you were born in the digital era, it means turn the nut towards you, not away from you. I'll call away from you clockwise. All right, that tightens that up. Now what we want to do is back this down a little bit. I, I turned the rotor. The crossbar block came off a little bit. And I want to make sure I'm clear for the axle shaft. Alright, well we determined that the axle shaft is not bent. <coughs> axle shaft is getting bent. Seem to work on the bigger wheels is where it happens. One, because you're fighting bigger fish. And two, because the throw of the axle shaft is a lot longer. So what happens is that gets exposed on the top end and uh, the tension on the shaft can often result in it bending. Small reels, small axle shafts, not so much. We're taking the tie down screw through the crosswind block to attach the uh, axle shaft to the rotor. I'm gonna try this now. Take our little block here. This is not from this reel, obviously. It just happened to be laying on my desk. But that's the idea of a shim washer. You can actually make these shim washers if you uh, if you want. Just take a piece of plastic from a soda bottle or a milk container or something and just trim one out. Put that back on. All right, let's take our side plate now. Now, it's a plastic bearing, uh, bushing. You don't need to do anything with a plastic bushing. It's a petroleum product that's self-lubricating. If you want to smear some grease on there, go ahead. Put the side case back on. It would have been easy to put that back on before I put the rotor on, but it had enough, enough flexibility in it that it worked its way in. Well, can't wait to put this on that four foot eight pole. Give it a try. I'm, now, this is a flea market reel. I don't know the age on it. I know it's cleaned, it's lightly used. You know, we had a little bit of a bottoming out issue there. I don't know the age of the line. Well. Monofilament is relatively cheap, so before I take this thing, bring it out on the pond, I am going to replace that. And because it's my grandkids, I'll probably put six pound test on there. It's recommended for two, four, and six. I'll put six on there. They tend to hang their, uh, their rigs up in weeds and trees and things like that. So if I have a little stronger line there. Maybe I can save a, a cork or two. So we'll go ahead and do that. Tighten down all three of those pieces. The only thing left in my box now is a handle. So let's take that handle out. I put the screw there so I didn't lose it. There is a little uh, lock washer that goes on the end of the screw. Make sure that goes in there. This can be set up for right or left-handed turns. Interesting, one of my grandchildren is a lefty and likes to have the handle on the other side, so a reel like this does help. We had them down in uh, the Chesapeake Bay. We were catching croaker and some things on light tackle. It was a ball. And uh, this one would have been a welcome addition to that if, uh, well, if it was around at the time. All right, let's give it a try, see how we did then. Well, there you go. That shim washer, we no longer have the bottoming out of this reel. 
so that was needed. Now that Marsha may be a little too thick. We're not going to know that until I put new monofilament on here and see if it is coning. If it is coning, it means it's riding too high. The line would be gathering up top and not on the bottom. And uh, while I'd have to go I'll do that trick that I was just telling you about, find a thinner piece of plastic. For example, you could use the bottom of this container if you wanted to, uh, to do something like that. Or a soda bottle or a milk jug or something like that. They all have a little bit different uh, uh, widths, millimeters, I guess, diameters, whatever whatever the word is I'm searching for. So uh, you find we'll find the right one and match that up. But that's definitely taken the, the bottoming out. This reel's ready to go fishing. Well, it'll, I'm looking forward to a lot of great days on the water. With that 4.8 uh, ugly stick and this little reel, we should have a ball. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. I truly do appreciate everything that you do. To everyone, please. Keep your reel serviced. Go to the flea market. You never know what you're going to find. And uh, sometimes you'll find some tuition reels that, uh, well, they're just fun to work on. And if you mess them up, well, that's the price of tuition. Uh, maybe you'll find some treasures like this one. This is kind of an interesting reel, right? So go out and uh, check your flea markets, your yard sales, your garage sales, wherever folks are selling uh, bric-a-brac and, uh, well, just uh, unwanted stuff. And give them a second chance. I hope you've enjoyed it all. This is Dennis with Second Chance Talking, wishing everybody well.